We're here at Peter Collins Soccer Park in Plainview, New York, the heart of Long Island Junior Soccer League, to present you with this brief video to parents and players of Eastern New York Youth Soccer Association. Eastern New York Youth Soccer Association is one of the oldest and largest soccer organizations in America. And it also is a nonprofit soccer organization, which is critically important for you as parents to know so that you realize that everything that Eastern New York Youth Soccer Association does is not for a profit motive, but rather to help you have the best opportunities for your children to play soccer here in New York, from Montauk Point all the way to the Canadian border. We're here to present you with some information that we think is important for you to know as a parent of a soccer player here in New York. We're going to have interviews with some of the most well-known alumni from Eastern New York Youth Soccer Association and from some of the most successful soccer programs in America. When it was time for the United States women's national team to celebrate their World Cup victory, they came to New York City's Canyon of Heroes, in the heart of Eastern New York territory. In addition, Eastern New York is home to three professional soccer franchises, the New York Cosmos, the New York Red Bulls, and NYCFC, making Eastern New York the envy of soccer fans all across America. Eastern New York Youth Soccer Association, or Eastern New York, is home to the oldest soccer league in America, the Cosmopolitan Youth Soccer League, and one of the largest, the Long Island Junior Soccer League. It was established as a nonprofit organization in 1972 to serve as a state association reporting to U.S. soccer. And while it may be almost 50, Eastern New York utilizes sports sign-up, social media, and the most modern technology to help our leagues run efficiently and effectively. Eastern New York serves over 100,000 youth players up to 19 years old, over 25,000 coaches, and volunteers with over 400 clubs. From Montauk Point, Long Island, to the Canadian border and east of Route 81. And there are 11 leagues that make up Eastern New York. Long Island Junior Soccer League, Metro Kids, Big Apple Youth Soccer, Cosmopolitan Youth Soccer League, Staten Island Soccer League, Westchester Youth Soccer District, East Hudson Youth Soccer League, Hudson Valley Youth Soccer League, Capital District Youth Soccer League, Mid-State Soccer League, and Central New York Soccer League. Eastern New York is affiliated with USYS and reports directly to US Soccer, which is a member of the CONCACAF region or Confederation which there are only six confederations in the world, and they all report to FIFA, the governing body of soccer all over the world. Eastern New York provides a variety of programs for all youth soccer players in New York. They say you can't be all things to all people. Well, don't tell Eastern New York that, because they have been serving the diverse needs of the youth soccer movement for almost 50 years. Here are some of their programs and benefits. U.S. Youth Soccer ENY Championship Cup, Arch Capital Group Cup, President's Cup, Premier League, ODP Olympic Development Program, Coles Cup, Top Soccer, Coaching Education, Trainer Standards, Risk Management, Annual Awards, Grants, and Scholarships, Hall of Fame, Referees, and Soccer Across America, just to name a few. Eastern New York works with leading edge technology to provide you, the parents, coaches, and players of Eastern New York with the best and most efficient services. To find out more about Eastern New York youth soccer, go to our website at www.enysoccer.com or call us at 888-536-9972 or email us at enyoffice at enysoccer.com. Se habla espanol. I was about four or five years old when I started playing soccer on, on Staten Island. And uh, on Staten Island, it's, it's pretty much a church league, so I, I started playing for St. Clair's. Um, and I uh, started in, in an indoor league, and uh, my mom still tells the story to this day. They were asking about the, uh, 
a little midget on the field that was clearly older than everybody else because I was running rampant on the field. So, uh, yeah, that's where it started in indoor soccer and then, you know, moved on from there. I stayed with St. Clair's for a few years and then moved up to Civil League Soccer Club, which was, uh, you know, travel soccer. I probably started at nine or ten years old. And then, uh, you know, through that, Civil League played in the Cosmopolitan League, so played with a bunch of Cosmopolitan select teams through the years and different tournaments with that. Uh, had a couple of stints with, with ODP and played some uh, Take care, two years guys. with the state team. Hi. Um, and uh, you know, that pretty much led me to college. There's a lot of factors to take take into account. Um, one of the things that was unique about my college decision was, uh, you know, MLS wasn't quite around yet, and uh, you know, I was making the decision based on what I thought my, the rest of my life would look like, and uh, you know, I didn't quite see professional soccer in that. So, academics was a huge uh, part of it, and you know. It, through the process, it actually ended up becoming pretty simple in that I wasn't highly recruited by a lot of different colleges. I was recruited by about maybe three. And uh, Fordham University happened to be a great academic institution with a good school, that, um, with a good soccer program that really wanted me there. And uh, you know, it kind of made its own decision in, in a way. Playing time is always determined by a bunch of different things. You know, I, I, going into college, I probably considered myself a, a very technical player and a player that liked to be on the ball and make plays and be creative. And uh, what I learned right away was that it was uh, a lot more physical than I thought it was going to be, and it was a lot more difficult um, to get time. I wasn't just a start, given a starting job. I had to fight for it. And, uh, you know, I learned that lesson hard, but pr fairly quickly. And, uh, you know, I think one of the things that I learned right away was that uh, not living in my parents' house anymore and having them drive me to practice all the time, that I had to de determine my own uh, future and, and learn to you know, trust my instincts and you know, feed off my passion for the game. And, um, you know, I learned that pretty quickly in my freshman year, and by the end of the year I ended up being a starter and far away and getting more playing time. And, um, you know, I learned that I, what, the biggest thing that I learned is that I really wanted to play this game and that I really enjoyed it and was going to do anything, scratch claw, whatever, to, to keep playing and, and do more. I'm not sure it was a moment, it was more of a stage in my life and, uh, you know, some of the, the independence of leaving home, um, the challenges of being on your own and, and kind of determining your own, your own fate uh, were the things that drove me and, and those questions, those challenges were answered by the fact that I, I just love playing. Um, I found out that I, I was, you know, I, I think I always enjoyed the game. It's not like I just learned that, but it, it just became something that was more mine, um, you know, more self-determined. Uh, you know, that, that competitive fire just was always there, but just kind of got lit by the fact that I, I was um, more responsible for my, myself. And, uh, you know, it drove me to be, I was always competitive, but then it just drove me to be more competitive. And then MLS came along in my sophomore year, and I, was, you know, I saw something in the future that I really wanted. And, you know, when, when those two things kind of met, uh, I think there was, there was something there, and I, you know, I didn't have it easy to, in my early professional days leaving Fordham, and you know, I had to fight my way through. But, you know, my experiences at Fordham definitely taught me how to fight, and that, um, you know, driven by my passion for the game and com competition, you know, that mix, that whole ball, you know, really you know, pushed me forward to, in my professional career. I kind of always saw it that way, you know. Um, don't get me wrong, I had talent and there were certain things that I had, certain skill sets and uh, you know, learning those skill sets and knowing my strengths and working on my weaknesses was a big thing for sure. But if you're asking for one thing, it's, it's definitely that, that passion and that desire for competition. Um, you know, I think I must have said a thousand times to, to reporters and whatever that you know, I was just there to get better every day and whether it was practice, game or whatever. My goal was to, to fight as hard as I could to, to get better each and every day. And uh, you know, as long as I'm getting better, I'm going to get more playing time and I'm going to get more opportunities. And, and the guys that are chasing me are, are going to be a little bit further behind me. So that's the way I looked at it. Well, if I'm talking to the parents, you know, I, I, I have to thank my parents for, for all that they, they did for me. I mean, my, my mom and my dad drove all over the place while I was a kid. So you certainly have to be there in a support role. Uh, but always remember that the your child is the one that's going to determine how far they go. And, uh, you know, it's more about how much they want it than how much you want it as a parent. And, uh, you know, as much as you can and as hard as it might be is, you know, to take a step back and let them be as independent as possible. Because I know in my experience that my parents were all over the place and they were so supportive of me and did everything. Um, but I didn't really blossom until they kind of took a step back and let me be myself. And, you know, maybe that mechanism of going away to college was was the reason for that, but I, I feel like, you know, they certainly prepared me and gave me all those great lessons about loyalty and dedication and, and commitment and all that. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it was, you know, my, my own choice and my own passion that really drove me forward and made the difference.
Hi, I'm Kevin McCrudden. I'm an international author and speaker and the narrator and producer of this segment for Eastern New York Youth Soccer Association. So now you've seen a lot of information from some of the most amazing athletes and players that have ever come from the New York area, as well as some of the best coaches in New York. And their advice is pretty consistent. It's about guiding our children and being there to support them and making sure that we help them develop the motivation and the drive to be successful players as well as successful human beings. Remember, one of the most important things that we can do for our children is provide them with love, unconditional love. Because as parents, that is the most important thing that we can do. Not help them get college scholarships, but to help them flourish as human beings. And also remember that Michael Jordan, one of the most important things in his life is he was cut from his eighth grade basketball team. It was a defining moment in his life that helped catapult him to become one of the greatest basketball players and one of the greatest athletes ever in history. That one incident of him being cut was the thing that motivated him. So as we try to protect our children from being cut or having other things like that happen to them, it may be the very thing they need in order to grow as people and to become even more successful as athletes and as human beings. And one of the founding principles of soccer in Long Island and New York is a quote from Rocco Amoroso, is building character through soccer. In the end, that's what we're doing. It would be wonderful if our kids play in the World Cup team or in Major League Soccer or in the NWSL. But in the end, we're building human beings and not soccer players. Once again, this is Kevin McCrudden from Eastern New York Youth Soccer Association. I hope that you've enjoyed these clips and this information that we've provided you. And I hope that it helps you guide your child through their soccer career. Once again, helping them to become the very best that they can be. Take care and good luck. <laughs>